So uh, I met Jason uh, six months ago when I joined Oracle, and then we had a chat uh, two months after that. Uh, was I was really interested in the in the social good work that he was doing, uh, because you know he is very active in, in in the social media as well. He shares a lot of information, and he has a ton of knowledge. So uh, once you know we had a chat on how to do uh, you know chat analysis and Slack, and the way he articulated you know his his vision and his enthusiasm that actually uh, drove me you know more towards this. And it, it made me think, you know, once I was thinking as to, you know, okay, what I've, what I've done so far, which will benefit the community, right? Uh, I had to think a lot about it because I was, you know, never, ne never thinking from that angle. I was always developer focused. I was enabling people with tools and platforms and which I felt, you know, uh, and, and I still feel when, when you enable people with the right tools, you will get, you'll get a beautiful outcome. You'll get a really good outcome, right? I was doing that, but I also had to think as to what I've done, you know, for the social good, for the community. Well, I've done, you know, something. So <laughs> this is funny, but I wanted to share share you. So you know, I've patented it, but <laughs> but you know, it, it's it's for social good, right? Definitely, people would have got tickets, uh, you know, traffic infringement tickets for something that is not your mistake, you know. Not always you do do mistake, obviously, right? So. Now, there are non-obvious or non-unintentional occurrences where you actually you know, do mistakes. So why not, uh, you know, we take into account the mistakes that people are bound to do, you know, when when actually we are charging them. So I developed an idea, and then the idea was really good. So the company wanted to patent it. Well, I think one day this will be you know, given out for free, and this will benefit the community. But yeah, thinking about that, uh, you know, I then spoke to Jason. I, I told him that I wanted to be involved in the work that you've been doing. Uh, and uh, the good news is I'm currently in Canberra, and that's why you see all the jacket and everything. It's freezing out here. But I'm moving to Queensland soon. So Frederick and Jason, you know where to find me. So I really wanted to be involved in this, and I'm going to do you know, as much as possible. Really good. Well, so uh, and thanks, Amanda, for the intro. So I, I think you all know about me. So I'm a solution engineer at Arco. Uh, I was with IBM before uh, as a Watson Lab solution engineer. And I love cooking, and I, I hike a lot. So the last mountain that I hiked was the Mount Everest. So I went to the base camp last year. It was, it was beautiful, a wonderful experience. I would recommend any day for anyone. And then I'm, I'm into flying planes as well. Okay, so but for this presentation, you know, I don't uh, want to be me. You know, I want to uh, want to tell you a story. So I'm going to be Arya Stark. Uh, and uh, Stephen, do you mind uh, you know, getting the polls out uh, to see, uh, you know, what what sure. where the audience are? Well, doing the first poll now. Mm -hmm. Up on the screen, where do data, data engineers or scientists spend most of their time in the data science life cycle? Got a, a lot of people out there with their fishing rods, they're fetching data. <laughs> yeah, and while people are answering that, uh, Ram, I just came through the article towards data science. That's really great stuff. And I think you will, you know, be one of the persons who will actually enjoy this presentation. So, you know, we we, we would have to. I definitely uh, will be keen to chat with you after this. Should we should we go ahead, Deepak, and do the second poll now? Sure. Okay. Queuing it. So we have two more um for you guys to answer. Deepak has four questions, and he'd really, really appreciate it if you can give your feedback. All right. So the first three polls are just for me to understand, you know, uh, what's uh, you know, what's what, and uh, what do you actually face with. So it'll help me direct the uh, the talk accordingly. The last one is an interesting one, but I actually have re revealed the secret out already. <laughs> I, know I should have shown this slide. Yeah. 
But yeah, it, we'll get that out. I'm starting uh, the third question or the third poll. It's another poll question, guys. Guess the percentage of models that are productionized successfully. So far, Deepak, we have 15% is leading. Right. And that's the right answer. <laughs> nice. Well, that was a survey from yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm queuing the fourth poll question. And as Deepak said, this is a surprise. So hang on one moment. Here you go. I definitely <laughs> wanted to know what the answer was to this one. <laughs> <laughs> so they but can yeah, relate I'm to Arya nice. Stark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm actually happy to uh, see that the audience is actually accepting with me because the 15% answer means that they know what the problem is out, you know, a problem out there is. So a majority may not be able to um, relate with Arya. Because mm -hmm. majority has answered no. Oh, and have you watched Game of Thrones? That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible. It is, it is awesome if, you, if you've got a spare six months up your sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll give a brief overview. So Game of Thrones is, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the famous series out there, uh, you know, which is about war between thrones to and who gets the throne. And there's a lot of dragons there, so it's cool. And Arya Stark is actually a char character played by a small girl who, who skills herself up, who finds the right tools to actually skills, uh, you know, skill herself up. And uh, you know, she always uh, analyzes and she takes the right step. And she helps others as well as she goes along the journey. So I, I just wanted to travel uh, and go on the footsteps of Arya here, you know, just to make it a bit uh, engaging. So let's consider Arya is a manager of a data platform at Northwall Network. You know, so if you if you can relate to Game of Thrones, you know what Northwall is. But yeah, just uh, imagining that here. Okay, so uh, just to set the stage up, what's data science? We know data science. We we use scientific methods, algorithms, and and programming. Uh, to actually identify patterns in data, right? So this, as opposed to uh, you know, traditional software development, where you actually program you know, an action, you say, okay, if this happens, uh, and this has to be the outcome. You know, you program it, you know what's going to happen for what. Whereas in data science, you actually identify outcomes, uh, patterns, and then you model upon the patterns, right? So. You know, that's data science and where is data science applied you know we in our day-to-day -day, uh, uh uh we face data science almost everywhere right from uh, you know churn modeling where you know customers will have to be retained with the company to recommendation engines if you want net if you watch netflix or amazon prime or if you're shopping anything online things are getting recommended to you and even google has a lot of data science a lot of algorithms underneath the search so yeah, we face data science, you know, on our day to day, on a day to day basis. But according to Arya, data science is chaos, right? So she feels winter is not the only thing that's coming. So there's a lot of chaos in that she needs to deal with. Why? Why does Arya say that? Because, you know, there are many, many reasons for that. The first one is a lot of cloud providers out there. You need to choose the right one. You need to, you know, uh, analyze the tools, capabilities, and then there's a lot of data out there, be it unstructured, structured, semi-structured. You know, we have moved out of, uh, we, we, st we still use a lot of relational data. It's still very powerful, but we have, we have enhanced that with the concept of data lake, where we are capturing, you know, every possible data to actually do a 360 degree insight analysis. And then there are a lot of open source tools to do big data processing, you know, like Hadoop and Spark, predominantly used ones. 
And then there are a lot of data science tools, which are also open source, you know, predominantly like Python R, scikit-learn, Pandas, TensorFlow, Keras. On top of that, data scientists need to do multiple things. It's not just developing algorithm. They should be good in stats, uh, math, and they should uh, know how to query databases. And they should also know domain knowledge and should be able to you know, converse to the business. And they should also be able to provide good visualizations. So a combination of all these, and then there's definitely Excel, right? So yeah, this I mean this is just for the job. <laughs> well, Excel is a good tool, and I have to agree. All right. So data science skills, you know, as we saw in the previous slide, there's there's lots lot of things that we need to uh, you know be able to do if we really have to master data science, right? So there are a lot of uh, 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 program, I mean, programming languages that support data science, and a lot of uh, libraries out there, which also, you know, you need to use on a day-to-day -day basis for data science. So there's a lot out there. So the combination of uh, the amount of data that's available, platforms and tools, the open source contribution, cloud and skills together is is the chaos that I'm, that that Arya is actually worried about. So what does Arya Stack need? You know, being a manager of the data plat manager of data platform in a company, she is trying to you know build this data platform for you know a use case. So she wants accelerators. You know, she wants something to be built really quick, and she wants a consolidated data engineering toolkit, and she wants an open source data science wrapper. You know, which is actually wrapping up all the open source toolkits under one thing. You know, she doesn't want to go for two hundred places. And she really wanted to operate it, uh, you know, efficiently and effectively using MLOps, right? What does IOSTOP also need? Well, if you've seen this, this is a crisp BM lifecycle of data mining. So, uh, you know, Aya here needs tools that will help her to collect data. So, you know, you answered in the survey that most of you, you know, try to fetch data, which is which is actually a big problem because data is everywhere. So, you want a consolidated platform where you can fetch data. So she wants that, and she also wants tools to do, you know, data understanding, data preparation, which in the data science world it's called feature engineering. And she also wants to model and deploy and then maintain it, right? So these are the capabilities that I is looking for. Well, but we all know if you watch Game of Thrones, chaos is a ladder, right? There is always an opportunity, and we can always, uh, you know, solve problems. Okay, and I'm going to show you one such ladder here. So I'm going to talk about this SDK, which is a beautiful wrapper, and it is it is free out there, which will help you to accelerate your data science workload. So you know, again, so I'm so I'm just sharing the love and the knowledge here, and I'm just enabling you, and you know, as I used to always. So there you go. So accelerated data science SDK. What is this? So this is a Python wrapper on, as I said, various open source tools. It'll help you connect to uh, data anywhere. I mean, I should not say anywhere. You have most of the data sources. Uh, and it'll help you build models, evaluate models, and deploy them. And it also has accelerators like AutoML, right, which will really help citizen data scientists. Or you know, in the community world, if people are just exploring this, you know. And they want to really start uh, doing something. You need accelerators like AutoML. So this 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 SDK has it. So what does Arya get with this? So she's able to do you know with just one SDK, she's able to do data collection, understanding, preparation, modeling, evaluation, and deployment. All right. So you know Arya makes a list always. So now. SDK is in her list. Again, sorry for non Game of Thrones people. <laughs> you know, people who have watched Game of Thrones will relate to this. Okay, real quick, I just wanted to show okay, how Arya has used this uh, SDK with small data. The quotes actually mean something which we'll know, you will know later, but I'll just show you how this was achieved. Okay, so, you know, since I said, I said small data because it's just one table that is being consumed. It is in a database. And uh, 
surprise, it's an Oracle database. Well, because we have access to it, and that's why you know the data is there. But you can connect the data anywhere. So this is uh, just an open data set, which is about customers in an organization, and whether they are leaving or not. You know who has left and who is still with the organization. So this is a traditional churn churn use case, right? So uh, we have a data science playground where you can actually launch a lot of notebooks, and it also has model catalogs. So I will show you one such notebook, which I have built. So if you see this, uh, yeah, I'm connecting to a database and just I'm loading the same data that I showed you in the table before. So this is the uh, SDK I was talking about, the ADS SDK, and it has a lot of uh, lot of uh, uh, you know libraries underneath uh, methods. So dataset factory is one such which is used to access datasets. So from ADS using this table, I'm accessing the data. So it's as easy as this, you know. Well, you access the data. So when I'm fetching the data, again, I'm using dataset factory here. You can even run SQL if you want. You don't have to fetch the entire table. So it gives you, you know, how much CPU memory is consumed using BocoJS. So that's that's really good. That's handy. You know, we don't want to get the CPU occupied always. But the good thing starts here. If I say show a notebook, this is part of the ADS SDK. And this will help developers big time. Because in order to understand the features, understand the correlations, I think we saw a snapshot of this in Jason's presentation as well. So you know this shows correlation between the features. And it will also give you warnings, you know, if you have null values, if you have a lot of zeros, if data is biased. So in order to do this, you know, developers need to spend a lot of time coding using pandas. You know, you have to understand your data. And then you have to do a lot of transformations. But just one method, you're able to get all that, you know, which is easy, saves a lot of time. And then suggest recommendations, it's one such method which also will suggest, you know, what transformations you need to do in your data set to actually, you know, bring it to a good state. As we all know, you no know, garbage in is garbage out. So we really want to clean the garbage. And how easy is to clean the garbage you know, than just using one method? Well, I, I wouldn't say that this does everything, but this helps you to a great extent. What else do you get with the recommendations? Well, if you see here, it gives you the class. It sets you, you know, in the data science lifecycle, it will do everything to create a balanced and a good data set, right? OK, so that's part of ADS again. So now, you know, you can build the model. You can custom build a model like I've done here. You know, train stress split using scikit-learn, and then build an SVM classifier. You can see, uh, you know, it's a classification use case as I showed uh, before, and it's it's eighty four percent accurate. And I wanted to validate it using model selection, uh, sorry, k fold cross validation, and the ten iterations, the mean is still eighty five percent, which means the model is good. You can also it supports Keras and Tenf TensorFlow. Uh, the notebook environment, so you can build neural nets as well. I've just used three epochs here, but in a tradition, I mean, in the real world use case, we will use more than that. And I've come up with some predictions. Well, we talked about accelerators, didn't we? So ADS, which SDK, also comes with the AutoML capability. All these 50 to 60 lines of code, we don't have to, you know, if it's a simple data set, and if we really wanted to build some classifications, you just supply the algorithms that uh, you know you want the auto ML to consider, and it will build it for you. So with just four lines of code, you're doing feature engineering, you're doing hyperparameter tuning, and you're building the best model possible. I mean, when I say you, the system's building, right? So you're not doing anything. So it just took 30, 40 seconds, and it built all possible permutations and combinations to come up with the best model. And it'll tell you what it has done. You know, it is showing you the hyperparameters. It is showing you the algorithm, and you are ready to use it. So see how this makes it easy, 
and you know this part of one wrapper so now we have seen just one sdk how it is used to connect to data sources fetch data transform data and even build models right with just one sdk okay now we have built it right and we wanted to evaluate it so again ads has evaluate toolkits which you can evaluate models with with just one method call and you say show in notebook it is going to give you a lot of metrics here so the roc curve is the receiver operating characteristic which is really good in a classification use case so the area under the curve is 83 so it's a good model and it gives you a confusion matrix again you know you have to do a lot of coding to actually you know evaluate your models but here it is made simple you get a metrics of your model as well right okay so now we have evaluated the model as well now we wanted to deploy it but when you deploy there's always a lack of trust you know you want it to you should have the capability to explain an outcome imagine you're putting something to production and it is telling you something but you don't know why it's telling you know that's a risky place to be so you need to have you need to have evidence to back it up even if it's a machine learning model and that's why the 15% answer you know what you answered is right because most of the organizations do not trust the models that they build and so it is not going to be put into production but when you have capabilities to explain you know you will have an evidence to back it up so this is one such so explanations goes two ways globally and also locally so when i say global entire data set is taken into account whatever you have trained your data with so in my data set globally i know that age number of products and the active status is is influencing the influencing the outcome right and you can also see how much it is it is influencing well i cannot use this every time this is this is helping me understand the data set you know uh, on a global scale but i should be able to explain at the local level at every transaction level as to why something is happening so here i've just taken one test transaction and i'm doing a local explanation here so if you see the true value was zero the model also predicted it to be zero right so which is a good prediction and when you see the reason for good prediction it will tell you why it shows it right so this is a good evidence to have so i'm going to show you a real demo here i'm going to choose another another test transaction right okay so you see here the true value is 1 but the model predicted it to be 0 which is a wrong prediction this is this is something you know that i'm talking about so when you put this in production predict uh, production you really wanted to back it up right when if, if you're being asked so now if you go to this it says okay just because of age i predicted it wrong right so these are these are things that you need to you know consider and tune your model with so having this capability gives you the ml ops that actually organizations are lacking these days so you know and again this is part of one wrapper which is making it really easy well yeah so that's how you know aria has achieved a model with small data but then the question is where is the big data you know when she goes and reports it to a, 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 a the manager of her the manager is like okay why not do it with big data okay so big the big data is always uh, you know uh, good for data science right because you get more data you'll have better models so when we deal with big data we deal with three main things data lake predominantly in object store or hadoop and a compute engine, a distributed in-memory compute engine like Spark. Right. So Arya is not surprised, you know, because she knows that she's going to face this. So what does Arya Stuck need now? She needs to be able to process big data, but easily. So the theme here again is, you know, making things easy, right? When we make things easy, when we enable people with the right tools in the platform, there will be good outcomes. There'll be better community or option. So Spark made easy is data flow, you know, which is a serverless Spark. It 
establishing a Spark cluster is a huge task. So when you saw Jason's presentation, he had a one node instance in his local machine to process the data. But if he had to do, imagine if he's going to do for the entire, if you, if you want to process data for entire Australia or Australia, New Zealand, one node machine is not going to help. You know, when we have the capability to do this easily and also big, we can do, you know, we, we can achieve good, you know, greater, greater insights. So this is a serverless Spark instance where you just click off a button, you have a Spark cluster to access, right? And you don't have to set it up, you don't have to design it, but you have the elasticity. You can just scale it to as much as you want. Okay, now Arya is telling, all right, that's interesting. So Dataflow will also make my list now. So I'm gonna show you another one as to how big data and data science, the perfect couple are going to work with each other. So this is how it's gonna look. I showed you the data science bit, but real quick in another two minutes, I'll show you how I'm handing off the big data workload to the serverless park called Dataflow, and then how I'm you know, building a machine learning model. Okay, so now you remember the quotes in the small data before? That's because of this, because now Aria is tasked with building the model with big data. Okay. So it's the same data set, but instead of a database, now we are going to consume it from a data lake and we're going to use object store as a data lake. So this is the object store. If I choose the right region, there you go. So you can see, you know, it's just a bucketed store and I have only one CSV there. We're going to consume this. So yeah, same notebook interface. Uh, you know, instead of doing it in the notebook, I'm going to do it as a PySpark script and I'm going to hand it off to the Dataflow instance. So as you see here, I've created an instance of Dataflow and then I'm writing a bunch of code in PySpark, but I'm storing it in this file, which is called the Dataflow handoff Python file, right? So same as before, but this is just the PySpark version. You know, I'm building a classification model, I know, traditional pipeline that you, you used to do in machine learning. Uh, but here I'm doing a logistic regression instead of an LGBM classifier, right? So once you, once you do this, you save this by just calling the app, you know, just the Dataflow create app method, your Python file is uploaded to an object storage bucket. Ta-da, and it comes here, and it's a surprise. Right. And then once that's there, all you need to do is run a Spark application, you know? So earlier you used to create clusters. You need to go to a cluster, create Spark apps or do a Spark submit. You know, there's a lot of work involved, but here everything is possible from within the data science interface. So now I'm handing off by doing this, I'm handing off the big data workload to the serverless Spark instance. So if you see, it is going to run your application and it is going to give you an outcome. So in my case, the outcome was to store it back to an object storage bucket, which is the data lake here, right? So if you see here, the STD out is the output. So it has processed the uh, the job and it has you know given an output. But I said, save it also to local. So in this case, it will also have saved here. So if you see, I just want to show you the outcome. There you go. So it was the same data set, but now it has prediction and the vector of features, and it also has the probability of prediction, right? So we have achieved the same churn model, but for a big data from the data lake using PySpark and also with a serverless Spark instance. So you don't have to build or manage a cluster. Again, making things easy, right, is the theme here. Right, I really wanted to, uh, uh, so there's, you know, if you really want to go and debug, you'll get the Spark UI and you can do, you know, wonders with it. There you go. What has Aya done by doing this? She has made not walled network get the iron throne, right? So, yeah. Right. So 
what have we seen here? You know, the things that uh, Jason showed you, uh, you know, what he was able to do with Oracle Analytics uh, for Whisper Social Grid, and whatever I've shown you, you know, by you know accessing these easy tools and free free SDK, you'll be able to do everything in the in the platform. And if you're really interested to go and explore, you know, use this URL. I think it's also in the handout uh, that you'll get. So you'll be able to, you know, get a five hundred dollar free credit for the platform, and you know, use that for the community group. Right. And yeah, thank you everyone for the opportunity here. So yeah, it was it was uh, it was uh, it was really fascinating to meet you all and uh, you know, share my love of the platform. Thank you everyone, and yeah, happy to take any questions.